Hello. Part of a long-term nerd project of mine is developing telescope controllers. And in that process, I made the experience that there is a discussion about the orientation of German equatorial mounts. And I made this video to illustrate what the problem is and how it can be solved in terms of terminology. German equatorial mounts are probably the best known type of telescope mounts and they are definitely associated with the classical looks of a telescope. I have one too. Mine is a very German telescope mount. It was built in a republic that no longer exists, the German Democratic Republic. And this is a Zeiss Telementor 2.5 inch refractor. As every German equatorial mount telescope, it has two possible positions of looking at the south horizon. Here north is behind the eyepiece and this telescope is looking at the southern horizon. It is positioned west of the tripod. This position is called west of pier. It can be pointed at the same position east of pier here. Again, the telescope is looking at the southern horizon. Other telescope mounts do not have these limitations. This fork mounted Celestron C8 is looking at the southern horizon, and that's the only way of doing that. It can also point to high altitude positions like the celestial north pole and it can move freely by 360 degrees around the right ascension axis. There is no kinematic limitations in doing so. And now for the meridian flip. If we try something similar with the German equatorial mount at a lower declination of, for instance, plus 40 degrees, as shown here, and our telescope is close to the meridian at 12 hours hour angle, a motion towards the meridian leads to an inevitable crash of the telescope into the pier. This is especially unpleasant if you have a camera mounted to it. As you can see, it is only possible to move 5 degrees beyond the meridian, which is located at 12 hours hour angle. The method to avoid such a collision is a meridian flip. I've illustrated the problem on Stellarium here, so as you see the mouse pointer, we have a meridian in the center of the image and the telescope is pointing to Capella, which is high up in the sky in this case. If we go to a nearby star, the logical pathway for the telescope is to move closer to the meridian. And the question is now what happens if we want to travel to a star on the other side of the meridian, in that case Dupe in the constellation of Ursa Major. So as one triggers this, the telescope mount controller knows that the meridian flip has to be carried out and it moves not towards Dupe in the shortest of all possible paths, but it starts moving up towards Polaris, towards the celestial north pole. It crosses the North Pole here and then starts moving down again. This is the meridian flip. Whenever a procedure called a meridian flip takes place, the telescope has to cross the celestial North Pole. This has a bunch of side effects. For instance, the declination motor keeps on turning in the same direction, but the direction 
switches from north to south once you go over the pole. And astrophotographers may also know the effect that after a meridian flip, the image is upside down. There's, however, a second meridian, the one in the north sky, but as long as it is not being crossed, again, the telescope takes the shortest possible path. We do barely ever look at the northern horizon, but as a matter of fact, a meridian flip is also necessary when crossing the northern meridian. In fact, large parts of the circumpolar region may not even be accessible because of the constraints of the German Equatorial Mount, and this has led to a number of constructions aside from fork mounts, for instance, banded knee mounts or the horseshoe mount of the well-known 5-meter Hale telescope on Mount Palomar. So what is the terminology problem I'm referring to? Let me illustrate this again with my old Zeiss refractor. The telemeter is looking at the northern horizon here and it is east of pier. You see that the right ascension axis points to the north pole. I'm now changing the right ascension by 180 degrees. And I'm sweeping the declination to the horizon again. By doing so, you will notice that while looking at the southern horizon, the telescope is now west of pier. One may say that apparently I carried out a meridian flip, but this is simply not true. Again, I'm doing the whole thing in slow motion. Telescope is west of pier looking at the northern horizon and I move the telescope following the horizon to the south. It's now looking at the southern horizon and it is east of pier. The general math of the meridian flip is that we have a new position, our angle prime by adding 180 degrees and declination prime by adding 180 degrees and subtracting the previous declination value. So this is puzzling, but you're not alone. When you look at the ASCOM documentation on the side of peer property, the problem is stated in the same fashion, and the simple reason for this misconception is that virtually no one ever looks at the northern horizon. The east of peer, west of peer convention is only correct when looking at the southern horizon. And you can read this by yourself in the ASCOM documentation if you want to. The question is, how can this easily be resolved? In my opinion, the only way is to introduce a coordinate system that is relative to the observer, which moves with the telescope and defines left and right as the sides of peer. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this little video.